I'm Papa Rod, and you're all my close friends. So. When is the last time you blocked someone from viewing your story? Damn. Uh, probably like a month ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. not too long ago. But I think it was one of those um, accounts that makes fake pages. Oh, got you. So that was an easy one. And that's been happening like every like three or four months. And I'm like, is this one of the homies who's doing this? <laughs> When's the last time you sent a voice note over two minutes? Wow. So I can't send those to everybody, but I have one friend in particular to where every time we send messages back, they're always like, yo, I really love the podcast you send back to me. <laughs> So I did that you know, probably like today. When is the last time you lied about not seeing a text? Um, Again, you know, I, I'm not a perfect person. Like I probably did that like yesterday too. Um, And lastly, when's the last time that you cried? Last time I cried, Um, let me see. It was probably in the last month. I'm definitely a crier. Uh, I, I, I think it's good for me every time. When I feel it coming up, I'm like, don't do this. But after I do it, I'm like, yeah, that was a good idea. I feel like that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, that's a beautiful segue into the first question that I have, because I feel like crying, um, as difficult as it is for me to get there, I feel like when I do, like you said, it's such a therapeutic experience and it truly feels like a part of my self-care. And so I'd love to know, how are you taking care of yourself right now? What does that look like for you? Well, um, I've been really proud since last April, I started going to the gym. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't get me wrong, I'm still like repping for the slim dudes, but right. I go in there and um, hit the treadmills or like the Stairmaster stuff and um, work on my abs. Cause I know, especially for uh, men of color, black men, like heart disease is very high amongst us. So we got to right. get that cardio in and move a lot. Cause like, it's one of those things I'll go to the gym and like dread it. And then I'll leave and be like, that was such a good idea. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not always going to try to get big or anything like that. I'm going to like feel better for my life and things like that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Like crying, right? Like in the beginning, you're like, nah, let me not do this. And then, yeah, no, you feel it afterwards. I love that. And I think it's beautiful because you mentioned about being black and like how that's, uh, I think an aspect to consider, especially like not only just in self-care, but also like how you move through the world. And I think what I admire about you, like just as a fan type shit, is that you are such a unique embodiment of self. And I feel like you walk this life very much, um, just authentically. And so I'm curious to know, especially like in a society that really confines what it means to be a black man, like how do you sort of, have you ever had to work through letting yourself not live under label or live in what people want you to be versus like living in your truth? Um, All the time, but I think that's a product of just how I was brought into like the world. Cause I was a military brat and um, I moved every two years. So like, it was bittersweet because you're always leaving France and stuff, but it always made me feel like I was entering a, a new tribe. And it was just like, all right, do you want to assimilate to that or just kind of rock your own wave and wait to see who rocks to like vibrates towards you? And especially as I was younger, it was easy for me to want to assimilate to crowds just so I could have some new friends. You know what I'm saying? So like, after a while, she's kind of like, um, I know that's not me, so you have a choice now. Do you want to do that or not? And I think that's always what's guided me. Totally, yeah, no, I, I think as I've like navigated that in my own, because I think when I talk to people about home, they have like such a specific, like there's a physicality to it. Whereas yeah. I found that the more that I've gotten to know myself and the more that I've lived in that, the more I realize like I am my home and my like morning routine is my home and how I make sure that I'm good is home. So before I even move through that, like what um what is your morning routine right now? Like when you wake up, what's it immediately looking like? Well, it's actually going back and forth because okay. I was reading this book called The Artist's Way, which I'm still reading. And it's, it's really big. Yeah. yeah, it's really big on like the morning pages. And like, as soon as I wake up, I'll get on that. But nice. if I have like a show in a different state, or if I'm out late, that can kind of throw me off of my routine. So like, 
it's kind of like all over the place. Some days I'll wake up and go straight to that. Other days I'll just wake up and go straight to my joint in my balcony. Okay. Other times I'll just go straight to the gym. It just depends kind of how I like set the tone the night before. You mentioned that sometimes rolling up is a part of the morning <laughs> routine. I see we talking already. And so I'd love to know the role that weed plays in your artistry, but also in your mental health. Like what does, what does weed mean to you? Um, well, I'm one of those people, I can't even lie to you. I've been smoking weed since I was probably like 12 years old. Like I'm living in Oklahoma, it was just, it wasn't always legal, but hell, somebody always had it. Um, so it served a lot of things for me. It's been there for me when I was like depressed. It was there for me when I was bored. It was there for me when I was creative or when I thought I needed it to be creative when I really didn't need it. It's been a bunch of things. And because it's been a bunch of things, sometimes you can lose purpose of what it actually is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, cause sometimes I try to be intentional and I'll use it for spiritual practices, yes. but I do use it recreationally too. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a plant that has life and however you mm -hmm. water it and treat it, it's gonna give back to you, you know? Mm, oh my God, child, I needed to hear that. That's wild. Because <laughs> no, I, I've been everywhere with weed and I feel like I I was at a place where I was very unintentional, just kind of using it to use it and, and just kind of being in this automated state with it. And then I wanted to break that and I got to a place where I was so spiritually intentional with it. Like I was only using it when I'm doing like deep shadow work and I want to get in the body and I want to, you know, and then I'm, I'm trying to find a way to come back to the knowing that I can also like just enjoy it because it's a plant that comes from, it's like a gift from Gaia and I should be able to just enjoy it and like laugh and like kick it and it's okay. It doesn't have to be this like also like spiritually, like I don't need to glean a lesson every time that I smoke. And so I think it's cool that you are sort of letting yourself live many lives with how you meet it with intention, I should say. 1000% knowing that it's been a constant in my life. <laughs> Uh, things change and take new shapes and forms, even if it's still around. And I can give weed that grace to change its purpose in my life and it can do the same for me. I mean, I think you're constantly shape-shifting, which is kind of your whole like thing. But also I think as you move into this next era, like in your artistry and in your sense of self, what are you grieving and what are you birthing right now? What's ending and what's beginning? Um, I'd say, the thing that's been going around with me and the homies in general, is just like that inner child. Um, and that's something that you can grieve if it feels like far from you. Like, you know, you know, when you go on a walk or a jog and then you turn around and be like, damn, I actually walk pretty far. Like, I feel like that sometimes, but with my like inner child. Just in witnessing you, you seem like someone who really centers curiosity and exploration and play which is in itself inner child healing and so if you were to look at yourself through the lens of your inner child how do you think they feel are they like impressed with your life are they tired like what are they feeling well that's crazy because there's i've been wanting to make music be an entertainer a vessel for performing since i've been alive so there's days where I'm listening to a certain song that I've been listening to since I was young yeah. and I'll be writing in a journal, which I've been doing since I was young and mm -hmm. it'll make me feel like the same age. Is there a specific song that when you listen to it, you like remember loving it as a child and it kind of takes you there? Um, let me see. I would say probably A Lovely Day, Bill Withers, because my mom always had that in the house. Eric Sermon has this song called Just Like Music, which has like a yes. flip on it. Yes, that just was one like of the first songs. Yeah, that was one of the first songs I can, I have memory of my pops playing in the crib. And it was the first time I ever heard him say, yo, this is jamming. And I was just like, yo, what does jamming mean? And how he was looking and felt, I was like, okay, I guess that's jamming, this is jamming. And I've always, wanted to capture that feeling in my life. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, a, that's the inner child. That's when the curiosity spark in music, you know? Yeah. Oh shit, I love that. That is so wild. Especially cause like, yeah, that specific song, my mom would pick me up from school playing it. And like, 
there's something so infectious about witnessing your parent in like the funk of something and 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 wanting to sort of like i think now you as an artist like wanting to house that feeling and i think it's i hope you sit with the knowing that like your music is playing that role for kids well you know what it is yeah. you know what it is when you see to your point when you see your parents do that that's you seeing their inner child yes. you know what i'm saying so it's like that's that bridge that keeps us going and that's the power of music and why you can feel ages with it or timeless with it you know yeah totally oh i love that if you could give your soul an age what do you think it is damn i go back and forth with that here's why because little kids like to impress adults like they like to impersonate them and like and when an adult rewards that, it's like, oh my God, you have such an old soul. A kid yeah. would do more of that. Yeah. And I think when I was young, a, a little kid, I got to be around and hear conversations and just pick up on that. And people telling me that I was an old soul, because I would always hear like, oh, that boy's been here before. And it made me like believe that. I was just like, okay. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think maybe uh, my soul is actually younger than I'm thinking because it's me trying to be a grown man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or like an old soul, you know totally. what I'm saying? So I'm torn, I'm not I'm not sure. I think it might be younger than than people think it is. Yes, yes, What's, I love that you said that because I've always found it very insulting when someone would tell me <laughs> I'm an old soul because I'm like, <laughs> I, you're just saying that I'm articulate. And so lastly, what if you could, not only give us insight on like what's next for you and and what era you're stepping in but also just kind of like if you could give this next era like an affirmation what would it be damn if I, this next era i would say this is your passion projects because i feel like we lived in a time, especially with like black artists, um, where I feel like a lot more people, and again, I, I love like rapping and stuff all the time. I feel like a lot more people were like rapping with hopes that like they can get big enough to make their passion project one day. Yeah. But like now with the access we have to just people and just with social media, just everything, just th things are different. You can start with your passions. And I think I'm like really realizing that now. And I think I'm really trying to like live by that and know that I can make things that I want to listen to that I feel like I'll feel comfortable making 10 years from now or, mm -hmm. or performing 10 years from now. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so it's just like you can make your passion projects now. I think that's my affirmation. <laughs> hey, I love that.